everyone, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. I am sitting with... Nicholas, I'm the video game correspondent for Idiomatic. And Chris, uh, editor and occasional writer for the site. And I'm Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. And today we are talking about violence in entertainment. Now that's, of course, been a big topic this year, throughout the year, because of <clears throat> the events that occurred in Newtown and... In various places in the United States, yeah, is violence in the media influencing people and making them do terrible, terrible things? That's about as articulate as I can get about <laughs> it. Yeah. It's just like, uh, and we wanted to wait a little bit until the dust settles, so as not to get caught in the zeitgeist of like punditry, if you will. And now that the dust has settled, and we can, and we have a chance of getting a civilized conversation about it i thought it would be a good time to revisit the topic i think it's um i think it's taken me this long to really kind of distance myself from that the photos of the violence that we've seen over the past year and but i think it is timely because we're about to head into the summer blockbuster season a lot of these movies were in another year of like comic book comes to the big screen and if anything that's just like punches things blowing up you know, iron man has already done it so we've got that threat of terrorism and now we've got the Robin Hood idiots of the Fast and Furious franchise. That's a great way of describing them, yes. <laughs> you know, and we're basically supposed to now trumpet their glory, you know, but basically, you know what I mean? Like, why are we still doing this? You know what I mean? Like, have we learned anything? Obviously, all these movies were in production before this stuff happened, but will we learn anything? And I just, I wonder if, if we need to, you know, are the two separate exactly is there something to learn even or is our entertainment separate from the sort of behavior that we've seen of late because it's probably really just video games that we have to blame and not movies <laughs> <Good else. laughs> <laughs> um, well yeah video games are pretty much the number one culprit every time you know Every time something like that happens... Well, it's and, the number one scapegoat. Yeah, it's the scapegoat. You know, they, they basically go, look, was he playing video games? And yes, it is video games. If not, right. well, then they kind of, oh, well, let's not mention video games this time, you know. But yeah, it's it's usually, hey, he played video game. It is because of video games that he did that. And that's, um, you know... Well, it's a question of, okay, I, I guess, let's maybe take a step back. You know what I mean? Like, what is entertainment? What are we trying to get out of it? It's something, it's an, it's, it's an immersive thing you know you want to kind of lose yourself in the moment you know yeah. for a movie it's two hours for a video game it's much longer a book it's much longer what does it best and when you come out of that moment has it changed you arguably you're supposed to say that the best art has changed you so the art you know what i mean i could almost say that a video game that you know is all about violence when you come out of it have you been affected yeah, but... You know, if you use the same language for both of these places, you know what I mean? Like for video games and for literature and for, you know, cinema, as but... opposed to just summer blockbusters. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, what are video games art? To, yeah. Uh, yeah. quote the late uh, Roger Ebert. Exactly. I mean, would you would you describe Transformers 3 as art or, you know, just like a summer blockbuster that, you know, just turn your brain off and enjoy? You know, there, there's, I'm, I, there are very certain video games that are, you know, magnificent to look at and have mm -hmm. great stories, maybe those might be considered borderline art, but I wouldn't say, oh, Tetris is art. No, it's just, you know, you place your blocks there and that's over. And, you know, first-person shooters, oh, you're, they're choppers flying around their tanks and you shoot them, would not consider that art. You know, right. they're pretty, but it's not necessarily art. It's, yeah, just because there's artistry in something doesn't mean that the sum of it all actually is art. You yeah. Know? No, I, I agree with that, but at the same time... Well, I guess uh, I'll go back to your initial point about Transformers 3. Yeah. You know, is there something you can just turn your brain off and enjoy? But, like, why do we go to that as a thing to enjoy? Like, what is it about us, you know what I mean, that says, you know, I want to watch something blow up, and that will be enjoyable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, is, are we feeding or are we creating? You know I mean, because it's true. When I go yeah. see, when I, when I, to be honest, you know what I mean, I work with movies all the time. So I see all these things day, to, day in and day out at work, you know what I mean? But when I'm going to go spend my money in the theater... Yeah, I want the biggest, loudest, most ridiculous thing because I want all the special effects for my money. My guess is because it's something you don't see in everyday life. So okay. It's something that's special to you. You don't see explosions every day and you know you don't see giant robots beating each other up. So you go to the movie and say you want to see something different. You would probably not go see a movie about some guy that, you know, makes subtitles for DVDs, you know, <laughs> in his life, you know. 
I might, because I don't do that, but you, you, you probably is like, no, I'm going to skip this one. You know, it's just, it's, you, you go to the movie to see something special and different. And maybe that's why violence is so, like, king in there because we live we live our everyday lives most of us without seeing violence like but we right. used to, we, yeah. sorry we used to go to the movies for spectacle um you know and we still do you know but the spectacle that we got was like more along the lines of the the musical yeah at the same so, time james bond existed very early on in cinema that's true uh but i'll take your uh, spectacle and raise you <laughs> okay um Pacific Rim. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the idea also of of of, of catharsis. I think the reason why violence and, and action movies and whatnot, much more than horror movies, which we'll get to at a, a, a later, I think, are popular. I think it's not the wish fulfillment of wanting to kill someone. It's I think it's more the wish fulfillment of living in a black and white world where the bad guys are the bad guys, the good guys are the good guys. There's barely any gray area, and you can kill the bad guys because they're bad, and nobody has to feel guilty about it. And we don't live in that world, and you know, thank God for that. We live in a much more complex, much more layered, much more interesting world, and I think most audiences are aware of that fact, and that's why blockbuster entertainment, action entertainment, becomes appealing because it's a it's it's an escape from the 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 shackles of complexity if you will i think to be honest i think you are onto something there just but again we're, we're leaving video games aside for a second we're maybe going back to movies but that's why i think something like um the avengers does so well not just domestically but overseas you know I mean? like a it's bright b it's monsters <laughs> you know you know so you know who the bad guy is it's no political machinations you know it's like you know who you're rooting for from the beginning and you can just do that. You can just enjoy the spectacle, you know? So, yeah. But should we still be doing that? You know what I mean? Like, I guess is the point. I guess, like, we've agreed, you know, like, we're, we're the fanboys who are fueling this industry, <laughs> you know, but should we be taking a step back? You know what I mean? Like, is that responsible? Right. Well, I think that goes from a person to person thing. I mean, I, I play violent video games and I see violent movies, but I am not going to go on a killing streak. You know, because I, I can differentiate between, you know, the entertainment industry and real life. And I know if everybody can do that, and if, if you know, if really, you know, violent video games or violent movies are the cause of that violence we see in society or something else. But, you know, how do you make the call that, you know, oh, that person should be watching those movies because they'll get influenced and, you know, they'll do bad things. Yeah, whereas, it's not PG-13, it's just, it's more like, no, 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 you look kind of iffy, I don't think you should watch this one. Exactly, you know. It, already, we know kids are, you know, very, you know, influenced by what we see. So that's why there's the rating system, and that's the parents that decide. No, the kids, you shouldn't go see that, or you should. But then again, you know, even when people get older, they can still be very, you know, influenced by these things. So where do you draw the line, saying, yeah, okay, you're okay, you can go see that movie. You're not, because you know, you, you, like you said, you look, you look here, they're going to be influenced and start killing people. You can't go see this movie. Yeah, and how can you tell? Because when you see people like uh, Mark Wahlberg, who you know, started his career looking like a very stupid person, <clears throat> continued his career later on looking like actually a, someone interesting. And then he'll, he'll come out and saying like, well, if I were in the planes during 9-11, I would have kicked ass and taken names and that wouldn't have happened. You're like, wow, yeah. really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, really? Yeah. You believe your movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, so to get back to your point, it, it just becomes, it's, it, it's impossible to sort of try to filter that through a, on a case-by-case -case basis. So I think to a certain degree, the argument has to be whether societally or culturally, rather, it's, it's something that we should pull back from collectively, or is it not necessary, you know? Or is it only okay if we do it in the guise of Godzilla? <laughs> you know, like, basically, natural disaster, you know likened as a monster and then you're just kind of running away you know and you you've got this thing that's bigger than all of us you know it's not a human you know and is that okay you know like and the flip side of that is like or is it that we need that sort of entertainment that we need this sort of catharsis because you know i grew up in a small town where i was the only minority and i grew up reading x-men comics where the superheroes got to punch prejudice in the face which of course in real life impossible yeah, I wanted to you know, pop out my Wolverine claws and snick snick the crap out of people, re launching racial slurs at me. I really did. I, you know, and I, I'm actually not a violent person at all. I didn't get into fights as a kid at all. Yeah, 
but and is it is it because I was able to have that escape? Is it because I had access to a fiction where that was possible, and at the same time the heroes were saying like, "But there are limits. Don't be a Magneto," you know. Like, <clears throat> does that sort of entertainment provide you with to, with a certain way to guide your frustrations and your anxieties that way? Hmm. I guess it depends what what kind of viewer you are. You know what I mean? I, I think. Like you said, you know, you play the video games and you can separate yourself, but it's just like, you know, I'm going to go back to the video games, but it's just like, it takes a level of imagination to get into a book, you know, in a way, in that leap, you know what I mean? The video games are trying to like close that gap in a certain way. Yeah. You know I mean, like, yeah. so where you turn it on and you, you forget the world around you and you stay up till four at night, you know, not because you're not tired, but it's because you've got like someone shooting you and you're so scared to go to sleep, you know, you want to keep playing, you know, like we're looking for that point where it's so immersive that it becomes real. You know what I mean? So if the point is to make it real, isn't it supposed to cause a reaction? It does, but it's still, you can still see it's a game. I yeah. mean, the day we, we get, might have that argument another day when they invent like virtual reality where you go into a holodeck and you I'm actually shooting people with a machine gun and you know, then, then I get like in of, first contact Star Trek. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you know, just like the car with the machine gun and you then you walk out and everybody looks the same again. And I decide to play the video game and I know that that's fake. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's this world I enter it and that, you know, that has been created for me. And then when I walk away from that, I know there's reality and, you know, the two are different. It's still a choice I make. It's not like, you know, it, it's so, games are not there yet. They were so realistic that, you know, oh man, am I, am I in the game right now? Or am I recording a podcast? You know, that there's, I can see the difference. Just an argument to challenge that notion mm -hmm. though. When we recorded the, uh, our episode of Don't F with the original plug, about Fast and Furious. Tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, it's a podcast where we discuss the original movies that start whatever sequel is coming out. Where can I find <laughs> something like this? Oh, at idiomatic.com. Glad you asked. Uh, nice. <laughs> but uh, you argued when we talked about Fast and Furious that, it, you know, you, you really disliked the movie because it was glorifying a street racing. Yeah. Now... How come that same logic doesn't apply to the video games where you shoot people? Does, doesn't it glorify shooting people in the same way? Um, there's a difference. In the Fast and the Furious, they're street racing on real streets in the real city. Mm -hmm. In the video game, I am a, a troll hunter shooting a dragon. What about okay. Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. That's a good point. I don't play those games, but um, I can oh. see what you're, you're going well, to. Actually, yeah. so I, I'm yeah. going to jump in quickly because I've got a daughter now. Yeah. And one thing, you know what I mean? Like we're talking about choices. You know what I mean? This is what made me think about it. Like the new Hannibal TV show. I, I saw the pilot, but it's just like it's a type of show that I, I just makes me uncomfortable now that I've got a daughter. I, like it's a level of violence that I don't like. And I've just made, that's a personal choice. Yeah. So you, you just said, you know what I mean? Those are the games I don't play. So wh yeah. how, what choices are you making you know, in terms of your consumption? I'm just wondering well, if it's just is it a thing you don't like or a type of interaction you don't like. It is it is probably a type of interaction I don't like. I'll give you an example. It might be a little, a little rough here. Um, but I, one game I'm really into right now is Borderlands 2. Where I'm basically I'm it's on a the Western thing, kind of a Western thing. Yeah, I'm on the, on the planet. I'm trying to open a vault on Pandora. Never a good idea opening something on the planet called Pandora, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm shooting people over there, over there, and you know, it, it's fun. You get different guns, different enemies. If you give me a game, you know, where I'm walking in a school and I'm shooting children, I'm probably not going to enjoy that game. Because, you know, it's like something that's very close to reality. It's not something I'm going to use to escape. It's something kind of gross to me because it's very close to reality. Mm -hmm. Not something I want to do. It's just, you know, being able to escape into something that's different that I enjoy. So if you make something that, that's really close to reality, it, it's just like, you know, that's kind of icky to me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, I'm talking for me. I mean, other gamers might feel differently. Like Grand Theft Auto was very popular. Yeah. And... I don't know, it, it's because it was one of the first sandbox games where you had so much freedom or whatever you wanted to do, mm. or because people wanted to steal cars in real life. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but again, that, that's not the kind of game that appealed to me because it's like, well, it's I'm just, like, being a criminal here, and it's not something I want to be. It's just, I'm, I don't want to go there. Right. And would you argue that, it, that Grand Theft Auto is something that, that culturally we should move away from? Or do you think that 
uh, just because you don't like it personally doesn't mean it's necessarily harmful, you know? Actually, that's personal. Yeah, I don't like anything that glorifies crime or violence or, you know, real, real, th real violence, you mm -hmm. know, like stealing cars like that or like, for example, movies about criminals. I mm -hmm. hate because, you know, it's like all, all the, the criminal is like the hero and you're supposed to think he's cool and stuff like that. I don't like those kinds of movies because mm -hmm. I don't think being a criminal is something you should aspire to. So why would I watch a movie like that? Why would I play a video game where I'm a criminal and the I, point I is think, to steal stuff, you know, and rob a casino? I just don't. I think the charm of the crime movie that takes that kind of trope is that the criminal setup is, you know, if he gets away with it, is basically the smartest person in the room. Yeah. Like, he sees our laws, realizes that they're just laws. He can kind of go around them. He knows how to fix the lock. He knows how to put the costume on. He knows how to do this. He knows... And he's the con man, and he just gets away. Like... Yeah. That's in a, in a way that's like the purest of fiction. You know what I mean? We we want to be that person. You know, um, I I see where you're going, but yeah. I'm just I'm trying to I'm wondering like why do I impulsively say yes to one thing and on the other side I can kind of convince myself oh that's not bad. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> Actually, the only criminal movie that criminal that features criminals that I like is Ocean's Eleven, and they really are not the smartest people in the room. They're a bunch of dumbasses. Which makes it funny to me. So I don't know. And they lose to a certain degree. The final yeah, yeah. shot of Ocean's Eleven makes it clear that they did not get away with as much as they think they did. Yeah. So I mean, so I guess we have a different point of view. It's mm. just I like video games where I can be something you know better that I aspire to. I love City of Heroes. It's going to sound very geeky, but I sound love City of Heroes because I could be a superhero. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then they come up with set of villains. I was like, why would I want to be a supervillain? That's stupid. You know, I'm going to keep playing. Lose. Yeah, well, they're supposed to always <laughs> lose. So I'm going to keep playing City of Heroes, you know. Yeah. But City of Heroes is better. I'm not, you know, the expansion, whatever. I'm not going to get that. I'm just going to keep playing the hero parts. I guess my tact for it is a similar. Um, I I do feel like, especially with action movies and, and video games, it's sort of the same way, though. I'm not a very involved gamer. So the storylines in my gaming usually involve can you move right towards the right within 300 seconds you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but with movies it's um i i do feel that you that the good guys have to be rewarded for being good guys and they have to behave like good guys and the bad guys have to be punished for being bad guys or at least the movie has to make it clear to the audience which are the good guys which are the bad guys or if they're trying to show a gray area of things, that there is still the polar good and the polar bad, and the characters are actually deliberately in the middle. Like, yeah. I have problems with... Like, I keep mentioning it as an example of it, but, like, I have such problems with born supremacy that establishes that killing is bad, but killing is good if you're trying to apologize for killing people earlier. Like, I have a problem with that. And that's why I, I can actually withstand a very high amount of violence with horror movies, because... The, the person inflicting the violence is always a monster, the undesirable thing that needs to be defeated or escaped. And I'm okay with that. I don't think that teaches bad morals. I, I generally don't. I, I grew up on that stuff when I was very young. The worst thing that ever happened for, from it when I was four is I was very scared when I saw Alien and I had a nightmare. But it, it never made me think that I wanted to burst out of people's chests or claw people with my Freddy claws or grab a machete and hurt anyone. If anything, I used to fantasize about how clever I would be if something like that happened to me and how good I would be at escaping it. So you'd but run, the basically? Is, would be the, thing. the thing is, those <laughs> slasher movies are very close to like a school massacre in my mind. Mm. You've just basically got this brainless guy with weapons and these innocent people running away. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know, like that's so. It's of all the things, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah he so is a monster. Is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there is no moral to be learned from this. You know, like, well, if you if you and identify with the monster, there's yeah. no moral to be learned from it. If you identify with the hero, there is. There's no hero in a case, in a situation like that. It's just like usually the person shoots themselves in the head. You know, like you know, it's just like it's really it's just like it's innocent victims. You know what I mean? It's just like, and you're just lucky if you weren't cornered. Well, there are heroes. Uh, with MIT, for example, we heard of a Holocaust survivor giving his life to save his students. I don't think this is a comparison I'd make. Uh, slasher monsters don't use guns or bombs in a restricted area. They walk around the woods and attack people one by one with their big knife or ghostly powers. No one relates to that. I don't know. Like This is just a horrible story from beginning to end. I think it's why I still haven't watched United 93. 
But does it corrupt, given that A, horror movies present violence as horrifying, therefore undesirable, B, scientifically we've proven time and time again that kids don't pick up violent behavior from entertainment, and C, these horror movies are rated R anyway, so kids, in theory, shouldn't be able to see them. That is a problem with video games, though, because there is a rating system as well. But parents don't think of that. They think it's a game. It's for kids. So they buy it, you know, even though it's fictionalized violence. I love Borderlands, too. I would never give that game to play to a five year old. Yeah, because, you know, it's still shooting people with guns. So it, you need to look at the rating and figure out, no, this is, you know, th these games are not for kids. You know, when with the rating and all whatnot, it, it shows a certain willingness to accept that some material is not for mm. children and whatnot. But ironically, I feel that it's the this this sort of material that we focus on more um, that is actually not as bad as some other material, which I'll get to in a second. I think I think children and and young adults learn from movies behavior, not tricks. Like you know what I mean? Like I I don't think anybody watches Jason and goes like, oh, that's how you slice a guy in half with a machete, you know. But yeah. I think the danger might be that they might watch Jason and go like, that's. That's how you treat women who are promiscuous, you know? Like, that's the danger. Like, I think horror movies are too blunt in their approach to teach that. But I think movies like, let's say, The Dark Knight with the Joker, who's a much more appealing monster than, you know, disfigured Freddy or whatever. Yeah. People will go like, oh, that's how you beat the system. That's how you become an, a, a cool-ass anarchist. And... I feel like almost like that these movies... Like Scarface. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the reason why and Scarface kind of having this resurgence as, you know, like a cultural brand. Yeah, know? exactly. That people kind of, you know, yeah, I'm so gangster or whatever. You know, yeah. You know, I, I think you're right. And in terms of the rating system, I think it just, it does call up something I think we've talked about before. It's just like the whole, you know, violence over nudity. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? What's going to be worse? It's, it's funny that that focus is on sexuality yeah. where I... I actually find, like, if you are going to shift the culture towards... Because you're not going to stop Hollywood from making violent movies. Because they sell. They're yeah. fun. Yeah. They're freaking awesome. I've seen Fast and Furious 6. There's a car shooting out of a plane in mid-explosion while somebody's holding six guns, like one in his toes. <laughs> and it's freaking awesome. I want to see that. And I'm not the only one, you know? But here's the thing. There's a reason each of those movies has done better than the other. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they were so successful, these movies. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But here's the thing. I also want to see... Megan Fox contort in ridiculously stupid ways on top of her motorcycle so I can see her breast and her butt at the same time, the way only Michael Bay can shoot it. Okay. And, you know, like, the sex also sells. So if you wanted to tone down the violence, I say up the sex. <laughs> I'll meet you in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we're so down on the sex thing that it sort of prompts Hollywood producers to, to only do violence. On, only do violence. So if you calm down with the sexual thing, let your kids see a little bit of skin without, you know, losing your mind over it. Because right now, there's only one way to titillate the audience, and it's through explosions. Yeah. When yeah. sometimes maybe I just want to be titillated by a tit. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to find a way to get people in theaters without using the big guns, let's say then use the, the sexuality, man, male or female, by the way. Like, I'm talking from a male point of view, so I'm talking about breasts and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. But... <laughs> <laughs> the rest is a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, a little bit of sexual thing, and, and I don't mean necessarily objectification, but a little bit more of a freedom in, in, in the sexual content might allow movies to explore sort of a different way to interest the audience that moves away from violence. And I'd rather, honestly, I'd, if you're afraid that your kids will have sex earlier, I'm less afraid of that than I am with them getting shot. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. I think that's a really good point. Then again, you know, if you're worried about that, you shouldn't have your kids go and see those movies. You still have to be the parent at, at a certain point. I remember there's so many stories of people working at, uh, you know, I'm going back to video games, but video game shops and, you know, parents shows up with a kid and, you know, my kid wants this game. And the guy is like, you sure you want that? There's there's blood and there's violence and everything. And the parents had no idea. So the kids ask for another game and he's like, no, there's nudity in this one. And, you know, eventually the parent is like, all this runs like, what should I buy him? And the guy, guy gives him like Lego Star Wars. And like, your kid will have fun with this, you know. It's really, you, you need to maybe do your homework and see what, what you want to show your kids. Mm. And, you know be the actual parent in, in, in this equation. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I think, you know, there's so little excuse for not doing your research now. Like, you, we've all got our smartphones. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. you can just, it's really easy to, you know what I mean? You can even, you can do it on the fly while you're waiting in line doing something else. You know what I mean? Like, if you really care, you know? Even if, let's say, one slipped by in your research, I think what parents are missing is often an opportunity to use these quote-unquote inappropriate contents to spark a conversation that will drive it back to being an appropriate lesson for that. Like if you if you're stuck, you know, watching a movie on on TV, and you, you know, you, you, come on, parents don't have time to supervise their kids twenty four seven. That's just not realistic and not healthy either. Yeah. So you, you're doing your your cooking or whatever. You turn around, you realize your kids watching a you know a violent action movie with dubious morals at best. So we'll call it Bad Boys Two. Just <laughs> <laughs> pull that one into the air. Yeah. You know, you turn around, it is a good occasion to sort of sit with them. It's like, what did you just see? You know, what are the consequences of that in real life? Like, what, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Why? And sort of challenge your child to have these discussions. Now, I've never had that with Bad Boys 2, but I've had that experience with some of the Disney Channel material where I was watching it. And it was like, you know, uh, uh, the character was treating her parents so badly in the context of a sitcom. She's mm. being the witty, naughty girl. But sort of like it's just not acceptable behavior that to imitate. And it's, you know, like instead of going like, oh my god, I, I have to squash Disney Channel for daring to show this while I was doing something else, well, when I should have been babysitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I sat down and I sort of asked her, like, why did you just see? Like, do you think that's an appropriate way to talk to your mom and dad? Because I don't think it is, you know? And there, there are lessons to be learned yeah. from even bad entertainment. You know, the trick might be to be more active parents. Yeah, I remember such a thing happened to me when I was watching wrestling when I was a kid. And this guy, the honky tonk man, he broke a guitar on the other wrestler said, I thought it was really funny. And I had like my toy guitar here. And my father immediately was like, no, 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 you know. And he talked to me about it. And he was like, no, that's not a good idea. And, you know, it's, it was really. But yeah, as a kid, I didn't know. I was like, it just seemed funny. And yeah, the guy broke his guitar. It's funny. I have a guitar right here. And it was like. <laughs> It's, it's exactly that. These days, it's even easier to monitor what your kids are watching because you can lock channels so much easier. Sure. I went I went to a friend's place and it was, it was like all cartoon channels. And I was like, don't you have anything else? I was like, yeah, we have, a, you know, another set. But while, while the kid's awake, you know, this is what he can watch. And he can just browse through everything. And so that, that's a good thing too. You know, technology make, is making things easier mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. not, not harder. If you take the time to figure out how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. Like we keep pointing to the world, the world of fiction, but I, I do think that uh, as children, even we know the difference between fiction and reality a lot better than when mom and dad bring us over to the shooting range and give us our AK four to seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? The celebration of the gun is culturally present outside of fiction. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And if anything, I guess like the fiction does stand on its own it's kind of as just like a, an other thing if it's because it's not part of your life i guess is the thing it's something you turn on and turn off you know mm -hmm. and you know we are kind of being becoming more immersive but the thing is if you're around violence in the house <laughs> you know or you know a certain type of attitude to women or race or whatever you know what i mean like it's what you see around you at the home you know that i think is actually going to impact you you know and affect your actual day-to-day yeah. And how you'll be, you know, 10 years, 20 years down the line, then that thing that you'll kind of turn on to forget that that might be happening, I guess is what it comes down to. So, you know, if you, if you spent your whole day reading like the best, most nicest book, you know, by Paulo Coelho, <laughs> you know, or whatever about like pseudo spirituality, like it doesn't make you a better person no. than what it comes down to. So I do think it's good that we kind of sample these different worldviews, you know what I mean? Like, and if it does open up discussion... Um, and that's great. You know what I mean? It helps people out of sometimes, sometimes a worse situation. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, I, I wish we could end on a, on a more joyous, uh, uh, irreverent note. That's sort of how we like to end things. But that doesn't happen sometimes. It just... Yeah. My titillation joke was gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Not that the heat of the moment is gone. <laughs> and I can look back on the joke as, as it really was. 
if you have any questions, comments, you want to keep the conversation going on our message boards, and please do. We want to hear your opinion about this. I think it's an important issue to discuss, and I'm, I'm convinced a lot of people will have very different takes on this. Yeah. Um, you can write us at mail at idiomatic.com or post a comment at idiomatic.com. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We're also on iTunes. Please write us a review if you can. It, it helps us. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. I am sitting with... Nicholas, I'm the video game correspondent for Idiomatic. And Chris, uh, editor and occasional writer for the site. And I'm Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. And today we are talking about violence in entertainment. Now that's, of course, been a big topic this year, throughout the year, because of <clears throat> the events that occurred in Newtown and in various places in the United States. You know... Well, it's a question of, okay, I, I guess, let's maybe take a step back. You know what I mean? Like, what is entertainment? What are we trying to get out of it? It's something, it's an, it's, it's an immersive thing. You know, you want to kind of lose yourself in the moment. You know, yeah. for a movie, it's two hours. For a video game, it's much longer. A book, it's much longer. What does it best? And when you come out of that moment, has it changed you? Arguably, you're supposed to say that the best art has changed you. So the art, you know what I mean? I could almost say that. A video game that you know is all about violence. When you come out of it, have you been affected? Yeah, but you know, if you use the same language for both of these places, you know what I mean, like for video games and for literature and for you know cinema, there's something to learn, even or is our entertainment separate from the sort of behavior that we've seen of late? Because it's probably really just video games that we have to blame <laughs> and not movie <laughs> house. <laughs> Good help. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, video games are pretty much the number one culprit every time, you know, every time something like that happens. Well, it's and, the number one scapegoat. Yeah, it's the scapegoat. You know, they, they basically go, look, was he playing video games? Then yes, it is video games. If not, right. well, then they kind of, oh, well, let's not mention video games this time, you know. But yeah, it's it's usually, hey, he played video game. It is because of video games that he did that. And that's um, the summer blockbuster season. A lot of these movies were in another year of like comic book comes to the big screen. And if anything, that's just like, Punches, things blowing up. You know, Iron Man has already done it. So we've got that threat of terrorism. And now we've got the Robin Hood idiots of the Fast and Furious franchise. That's a great way of describing them, yes. <laughs> you know, and we're basically supposed to now trumpet their glory, you know, but basically, you know what I mean? Like, why are we still doing this? You know what I mean? Like, have we learned anything? Obviously, all these movies were in production before this stuff happened, but. Will we learn anything? And I just, I wonder if, if we need to, you know, are the two separate? Exactly. Is there, Yeah. is violence in the media influencing people and making them do terrible, terrible things? That's about as articulate as I can get about <laughs> it. Like, yeah. it's just like, uh, and we wanted to wait a little bit until the dust settles so as not to get caught in the zeitgeist of like, punditry if you will and now that uh, the dust is settled and we can, and we have a chance of getting a civilized conversation about it i thought it would be a good time to revisit the topic i think it's um i think it's taken me this long to really kind of distance myself from that the photos of the violence that we've seen over the past year and but i think it is timely because we're about to head into the